Hey guys, how's it going? Service bolt 36 on an RV4 stabilizer. This is a brand new stabilizer, no cracks. My goal is to make this freaking repair one freaking episode. So hang on, here we go. Hey guys, so what we've got here is an RV4 stabilizer. Brand new, never installed, probably a lot of RV tail kits laying around, if you know what I mean. Anyway, long story short, we are going to, the, the owner on his other stabilizer, he had an airplane ground interface issue. Um, so it, uh, this one is in much better shape. So we are going to put his elevators on this stabilizer elevators. We've already done a fit check. Everything looks good. So seeing as he, uh, he had a doink in the uh, stabilizer. He pulled it off and we're going to just put a brand new stabilizer on the aircraft. We had it in stock. So it works out real well. This one here, just like the RV3 that we did, we're going to be putting the uh, service kit in. So we're going to be putting in HS416, which is a form part. When you get your RV4 kit, these parts are formed. On the RV3 kit, you get formed parts plus you get raw aluminum on the RV4 kit you don't get the raw aluminum uh, on the RV4 kit you also get formed stamped hinges ready to go which is a whole lot nicer than getting a chunk of steel on the RV3 kit so that's kind of cool uh, the other thing is that you still have the 714 or pardon me 718 HS 718 doublers if you have a crack spar we don't so we're not going to use that so we're going to be putting in the nest doublers and new hinges and uh, get after it. Big thing here is just like we did our, on the other one, we have to have seven inches for the nest doubler to be after trimming. And we've got to pick up at least three rivets on either side. So this is looking pretty good. A little bit different geometry than the RV3. You'll also notice that the hinges are a little bit farther out on the stabilizer than the RV3. So that's kind of neat. Um, anyway, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by marking out my rivets, drilling some stuff. And we're going to do a lot of uh, a lot of stop action, time lapse, whatever you call it. So anyway, here we go. Okay guys, that wasn't too bad. If you noticed, I put my, I got my stupid tape, but I put tape on here where I don't want to drill out. So took care of that. Got six rivets, top and bottom, all drilled out. Number 40, so they're ready to go. Um, next step is we're gonna drill the number 30, um, eighth inch rivets uh, for both hinges, and uh, we're all four pieces and get that going. So back to the, back to the time lapse. <laughs> Okay, I've got all the hinges out, got them all marked, so we're just going to set those aside for now. Now what I'm going to do is get these nest doublers figured out in place where laterally they need to be, and then I'll start trimming them off. So let's figure out, i got to just kind of jump in. We'll see how it fits. So, ooh, oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that one there. And then I'm going to trim it. I will trim it um, absolutely gross so that I have it butts right up the next rivet up against the next rivet. What that allow me to do is get it in place laterally, and then what I will do is I'll drill my upper and lower rivets from the uh, for the spar attach, and then. 
Uh, I'll back trim on ED from those, making sure I have my seven inches and, and three rivets. So anyway, I like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Um, anyway, same, same, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it for those. I'm going to go give them a rough trim on the bandsaw and come back and we'll get them a little bit better. That's what's going there. I'm using the electric drill only because this is kind of a small job. I figure some of you folks may not have an air compressor handy. Um, I hate an electric drill. I don't like it. It's big. It's clunky. It's slower than the air drill. But I'm using it just because I don't want to listen to the little air compressor right now. Hey, you know. Anyway, off to the bandsaw. Okay, I'm back with the uh, trimmed off a couple inches on either side. So now we're going to just fit these in. See how they do. Ooh, yeah. I'm digging that. Very nice. So. Take some Fleco clamps, get this in position, and then we're going to get our number 40 and drill the upper and lower cap. Cool beans. The other thing you'll notice when you're, when you're moving this thing around, if you are off the aircraft, um, you're going to have at least eight bucktails on either side floating around. So the rib here, this mid span rib is solid. They're not gonna come out. So if you are have the horizontal stabilizer off the aircraft, you can shake it around, probably open up your, uh, your tip rib up to the 7 16 for inspection and you can jiggle them out there. If you are on the airplane, you're doing all this on the airplane, good luck. Let me know how it comes out because uh, Gonna suck. Anyway, that's one in. Do the other one. Okay, we've got those all nested in place. They're all Clico clamped. Good to go. And what we're gonna do now is drill our six fasteners there and then Clico them in. So drill in and Clico in. Time lapse. See you in a minute. <laughs> got these all drilled top and bottom quick on uh, one side um, now I can actually trim them trim these uh, 416 channels to net I can trim those to net get my edge distance get those trimmed to length length only because I can't trim the inner uh, radius which is not real well defined in the bolt but I can't do that until I get my hinges placed and this is the problem is I can't see I can't place my hinges because I don't know where the holes are So how am I gonna do that? I got an idea. So hang on. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break do some uh, probably water uh, Probably get a cold drink or something like that, and I've got to put some stuff together, and then I'll be back Okay guys, I am back um, cut these off trimmed them up um, So they are now to net length. They are not yet to Having the V cut out, um, we've got to do that after we place the hinges. So anyway, that's that. What I'm going to do is show you a little hack. I guess you call it a hack. Uh, just the way I do it, the way I was taught, um, it seems to be much better than a lot of other things. What we have to do here is now that we have our um, nest doubler, and I'm going to be running the uh, I'm going to be running the uh, second camera. But now that we have the nest doubler set up, we know exactly where it goes and all that. We've got the length seven inches. We've got three rivets on either side. In this particular installation, we've got three and three. Some like we did on our RV3 series, we had a little bit more. So anyway, this thing fits great, all set up. The only problem is there's no holes in it. So how are we gonna get the holes lined up with that? So there's a lot of ways you could do it. Um, a lot of folks love these uh, hole duplicators. I personally think they're absolute rubbish. Um, I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it, but um, 
this is the way I was taught. I have a set of these. They're in the bottom of my toolbox. In all my years, I've never used them because they suck. That's my opinion. Uh, the uh, tool company probably has a different opinion, but I'm going to show you a different way. So here we go, real quick. Okay, the secret ingredient I'm going to be using is real simple. This is polycarbonate. It's clear. Um, well, you might say, well, plexiglass, right? No, this is not plexiglass or perspex, um, which is acrylic sheet. This is polycarbonate. The neat thing about polycarbonate, we use this um, for years. We just get a four by eight sheet and we just keep slicing off bits for different repair jobs we have to do. And then you throw it away when you get done. But the deal here is you can see right through it. So what that allows us to do is we can lay this on. We can use it as a transfer template for our hole pattern. So anyway, I'm going to do that. Uh, real simple, this stuff here, I uh, kind of ordered it quick and dirty. Um, but uh, let's see, left hand, we're, we'll do, we're going to do the left hand. This one's for my right hand. Um, it uh, comes with a protective sheet on it. Just peel that off. And then um, we're going to be taping it in place. And what I'll do is let me get it taped in place. I'll get this chunk off of it. And then you'll see how it works. Uh, when we get the holes in this, then we'll put the nest doubler back on, click it in, and then we'll transfer the hole. I'll show you how that all goes, but nothing more than just clear polycarbonate sheet. Um, I would recommend no more than 16th. This is actually, I think it's about 90 thousandths. This is uh, 3 16th or 3 30 seconds, I think. Uh, 16th is probably plenty thick enough. This is kind of what I got late at night, head to cart, uh, shopping on Amazon. So here we go. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I've, ta I've, I've got and cut this kind of taper to fit right here, nest down in the spar area. And what I'm going to do is, pardon me, I don't have a support. Again, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you don't have a, uh, you don't want to spend a weekend building a support for a job that shouldn't take that long. Now, if you've really been attentive and noticed, you'll notice that I, it's about the third shirt I've been wearing because... This is kind of all fill work for us, so just a thing. But we've got a lot of other projects going on. So anyway, there we go. Um, you can see here the... Um, let's kick that over. I'm going to kick that out of the way. It's our nest over. So you can see here, nice clear deal. I've got it taped in. I've got it marked left hand. And then we'll take our drill. Come in here. And the beautiful thing is you can look right through it and drill right down. And so on and so on. Now the nice thing about polycarb, you don't need a special drill bit like you need with uh, plexiglass or perspex. So we can just drill with a regular drill bit <clears throat> and then uh, we get all done. Then we'll be drilling aluminum with the same drill bit. So kind of neat. Um, repeat is necessary. So let me rip on through this. Okay, okay, I've got my holes drilled in the uh, through the polycarb, so all I'm going to do is just take the tape off the end, lift it up, and then slide this guy in, and click it in place, and then this will go back down again, right on top of it. So let's get it click it up. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now, now I've got my Lexander car, uh, polycarb on top of the aluminum um, HS416 channel. So now all I'm going to do is I'm not going to drill all the way. I don't intend to anyway. But what I'm going to do is uh, use this drill guide as just a, uh, I'm going to just basically kiss it, get my centers, then I'll drill with number 40, and then bring them up to full size on that. So it should be... Do a little bit of that on each hole and we're just using this just using this as a drill guide that's all and it's a whole lot quicker also than fumbling with a strap duplicator and all that so kind of neat now we do the hinges we can't do the hinges the same way. What we're going to do on the hinges is I made, I just have an aluminum angle. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to have to transfer the hinges on their own, um, but they should click go right in. So that's my plan there. Okay, I've got all my centers of my holes all set. I'm going to take this out, drill at number 40, then drill at number 30, and click it back in place. So hang on, here we go. Okay, so we've got the uh, we got this drilled and deburred. Um, let's see how we did. There you go um the hinge holes are all drilled um real time i was fumbling around with the camera and everything else real time was about five minutes honest goodness five minutes so lay a piece of uh lexan polycarbonate down do your holes don't drill them all the way just use that as a guide and then when you take it out i use that i do that in 30 number 30s take it out and then those are all centered up ready to uh, i hit it with a 40 take them to 30 full size come back so now we are ready for the starting to drill the hinges and get those placed. So anyway, other side, same as this side, easy peasy. Um, let's go drill some hinges. Okay guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the hinges. The hinges are steel, they're 063 on this RV4, just like what came off. So these are the old hinges, these are the new hinges. So first thing we're going to need to do is replicate the whole pattern for the foot of the hinge. Now we do have to shift the pivot point up. We're going to re-drill those and I'll do a, a follow-on fixture on that. We're going to have to drill that up. Um, 40 thousandths the thickness of the uh, of our little 
our little fill doubler there. So that's no big deal. But what we have to do first is we have to replicate the steel pattern, or pardon me, the footprint pattern of all the new hinges. So in this kit, in the RV4 kit, they give you four brand new hinges, very nice. And we're just gonna replicate these. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm gonna pick up one of these. Boom, boom, boom. There we go, number one. What I did is I just took a piece of um, 40 foul and um, basically put it in here, made a little 90 degree deal. Okay, that's my drill fixture. Gonna come in here with a Clico clamp. This is actually a wedge lock. This is kind of cool. Um, if anybody has a couple of these, I sure could use their, I think they're at least, at least 50 years old. I got them out of my dad's toolbox and I have yet to see any others, but these are freaking awesome. So everybody want, if anybody wants to make new ones, feel free. I insist. Okay, let's get that where we can get around that. Okay. So now we've got our, um, got a clamped in place, and we're just going to go drill four holes right there. Boom, boom. Easy peasy. Boom. Boom. And I use uh, cobalt drill bits. Uh, I've been using them for years. They're the best ones. They last for quite a long time. So, kind of cool. So now I've got my hole pattern for number one. There's that. I'll prick up my number one, put number one over there so I don't mix it up. And then I take number one, new one, that we're going to put it. I'm going to clamp it in the same deal. I'm going to put it right up against the edge here. Clamp it. Make sure I'm not drilling over anything. Cool. Come in here, clamp that, excellent. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm gonna kiss those that, those holes. The aluminum will act as a real good drill guide. And it gives me a nice little divot for number 40. I'm going to use a number 40. to actually drill the holes all the way through. And then size it up to a uh, number 40. So that was with a 30 and all we did was we just kiss, we kissed the bottom of it. And what's nice is now we have a nice little indentation, absolutely centered, beautiful to drill our pilot holes. It's a, uh, no big sweat. Okay, come in here. And now I'm going to drill my... Drill them all the way through. With the number 40. Boom, back to a number 30. Boom, one hinge down, three more to go. Repeat as necessary. I'm not gonna um, torture you with that, so. We'll see you when we start drilling the uh, top hole. Okay, guys, final step is going to be drilling the, or back drilling the old hinges to the new hinges. And what we've done there is we've got a piece of steel uh, backing, got a 40,000 spacer that's simulating the, um, the hat or the uh, nest doubler. So we've got that going. And then it's pretty simple, just back drill that. So nothing going on here. You can see here, this is just as per the service bulletin. We've got a piece of uh, support plate on the bottom, piece of 40 over here. Our new hinge is um, set up on top of that. Our old hinge is there. So that gives us our 40 thousandths difference of hinge line. And then we're going to drill, just back drill into that. Boom. That will set our deal. So we're in, we're in good shape that way. We've got the edges all lined up. Everything's good there. Now, one thing that you will find 
on putting the um, hinges back in because the nest doubler, and I've got the other pieces somewhere, uh, because the nest doubler is a little bit, um, is a little bit, we just added 40 thousandths. We want to make sure that this edge of the hinge does not get into the radius. And you'll see that in the service bolt. And so you'll probably end up taking about 40 thousandths off of each side, maybe a millimeter, something like that. Um, about that much just to stay out of that radius. You don't want to put a sharp edge into the radius of the nest doubler. So that's what's going on there. I'm going to um, get all these drilled and then uh, I'll be... Um, priming them and getting all the aluminum parts done. Uh, I've got to cut out the little V's in the nest doubler. That's no rocket science there. I did it on my other video. You can go look at that one if you want to see the long form. Uh, short of that, um, the one thing I did misstep is or misstate on is the original hinges were 50,000 steel and they changed them to 63,000 steel. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I, it's great. They put more thicker material in, but really the failure was in the web of the spar, um, not here. But, you know, that's what Van wants to do. That's what Van wants to do. So that's what we got going on there. It's a bigger, thicker hinge. Hopefully that will take those loads into the spar web. So that's what's going on. Service Bolton 36 on an RV4. If you guys can figure out how to get those bucktails out, you let me know. It'll probably be, uh, and you probably want to count them too. You're going to have eight in each side. So in order to get that stuff from clanking around an aircraft, uh, or if you're doing repair on the aircraft, uh, again, go in probably through your, uh, your um, bore scope hole and then suck them out. Count them in the vacuum cleaner. Make sure you got them all out. Short of that, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to stand it up on end and shake it out. I think it'll come out okay. So that's what's going on. I'm going to have a bunch of pictures at the end of this thing so you can see everything that we did. Um, any questions, comments, put them below. Uh, anything else, uh, definitely hit the thumbs up. Uh, any of that stuff helps us out. If there's any more content you guys want to see, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, notify. Short of that, um, it's getting hot again out here in Texas. I got, this is the third day, third shirt, maybe fourth. I don't know how you count them. Um, anyway, that's it. Hang your rats out. Go fly yourself. Stay cool.